Auto Load is an exclusive John Deere system option to help provide more consistent loading, easier operation, and higher production. A variety of tractor and scraper operations can be preset to make the cutting and filling actions more automated. This video clip will explain how to set up and use the John Deere Auto Load system. If you're not familiar with the tractor controls, please view the cabin control section for the 9R and 9RT series tractors. Before setting up the auto load system, the operator stops the unit in a crescent turn on a flat surface. From the seat, he must be able to see the scraper cutting edge, and in this configuration, both cutting edges. Auto load is set up using the command center console in coordination with the SCV switches on the command arm. In a normal configuration like this, the number one SCV controls the front scraper's cutting edge height. And SCV2 controls its gate and ejector. SCV3 controls the rear scraper cutting edge height with SCV-4 controlling the rear scraper gate and ejector. Each of these has an upper and lower detent or click position that is programmed using the command center. Auto load has the ability to store three position set points for each scraper, the upper, lower, and ground level. The upper and lower set points allow the scrapers to be quickly returned to preset positions by clicking the SCV switches. Ground level is the position at which the scraper begins the cut. These position set points are set using the scraper setup panel. The easiest way to set up auto load is by using the auto load wizard in the auto load menu. To access the wizard, Navigate to the Auto Load menu, then press the J button. This gives you a screen to input the size of the scrapers that are attached. The tractor must know this in order for Auto Load to work properly. The operator's manual provides a listing of these values. The A dimension on the screen is the total length of the scraper from the end of the tongue to the back of the scraper. In this example, it is 31.0 feet. The B dimension is the distance between the front of the bowl to the center of the rear axle. In this example, it is 9.0 feet. Also on this screen, you can select or deselect using the automatic differential lock feature if equipped when using auto load. You can also select or deselect the automatic load count feature that displays how many loading cycles have occurred since it was reset. Now that the scraper size and other features are set, press the I button. The auto load wizard will guide you through the steps for setting the cutting edge height. You will notice the cutting edge position indicator will change color. The color changes depending on the current phase of the digging process. Refer to the Position Indicator Color Scheme table in the Operator's Manual. The first step is to raise all scrapers to the full up position and press the F button on the console, or, as the operator is doing here, click on the F icon on the screen. Next, lower the first scraper to the ground. Because these scrapers have a drop center, the operator moves forward to allow the drop center to penetrate the ground just enough so the outside cutting edges meet the ground for an accurate reading. Now, click on the I icon. Next, raise the first scraper to the desired lower set point, which is usually the cutting edge height when dumping the load. Click on the H. Now, raise the first scraper to the desired upper set point, which is the transport height, and click on the G. The next step is to lower the second scraper to the ground. Again, to provide an accurate ground point, the operator lowers the second bowl to the ground and drives forward slightly so the cutting edge just penetrates the ground. Now, click on the I icon. 
like the first scraper, raise the second scraper to the desired lower set point, or dump height, and click on H. Now, raise scraper number 2 to the desired upper set point, or transport height, and click on the G icon. The advantage of the John Deere Autoload system is that it will automatically raise and lower the cutting edge height during loading to maintain a constant draft load on the tractor. This draft load is set using the draft buttons and the command center monitor. There are at least two draft values that must be entered into the system. The first is during the initial cut as the scraper begins filling. The second is the average draft when in the cut. A separate initial cut value needs to be set for the other scrapers if used. We will demonstrate setting the values for a double scraper system. The first value being set is for the average draft. This is from the middle to the end of the cut and is the same value for all scrapers. To adjust, the operator presses the average draft button on the command arm. Using the scroll knob, he moves the indicator to the left to decrease the amount of draft. Next, the operator presses the Scraper 1 initial draft button. This will set the draft for Scraper 1 from the start of the cut to the middle. Moving the indicator to the right will increase that draft. Next, the operator presses the button to set the initial draft for scraper number 2. Again, he moves the indicator to the right to increase the draft. A good rule of thumb is to start at the 25% mark for both initial and average draft, then adjust it on the fly as the scrapers are loading. A cut or two may need to be made to fine tune these settings. Note, if the draft is set too aggressively, the tractor will spin out or even stall. Before going to work, make sure that the scraper's gate and ejector time is set for one push unloading. This was explained in the cab and control section video clip. While this is not a direct function of the auto load system, it will make the unloading operation easier. We are now ready to go to work. For auto load to work properly, the engine should be at full throttle with the transmission in sixth gear or higher. Before entering the cut, set the gate opening. To activate auto load, both cutting edges must be at or near the lower set point which is usually the dump height. Now, clicking SCV-1 to the lower detent will begin the loading of the front scraper. Listen to the sound of the tractor as it pulls down and then maintains a constant load. When the first scraper is full, the operator clicks SCV-2 to close the gate and SCV-1 to raise the front scraper to transport, and then SCV-3 to lower the rear scraper into the cut. When the rear scraper is full, he clicks SCV-4 to close the gate and SCV-3 to raise the bull into transport. Both scrapers have been efficiently loaded with minimal effort from the operator. The cut is smooth and consistent because auto load automatically determines the cutting depth. Programming the ITEC switches will make using auto load even easier. For instance, the operator can sequence the closing of the scraper one gate, raising of its cutting edge, and lowering of the second scraper into the cut with just one ITEC click. Autoload also aids the operator when spreading the load in the fill. As was shown earlier, the operator programmed the cutting edge height for the fill during the autoload setup.
This consistent fill height results in a more even spreading of material for a smoother fill area. This greatly improves the compaction of the material. The advantages of using the autoload system are easily seen and demonstrated. In this side-by-side -side comparison with the same operator, can you guess which pass was done in autoload versus manual? That's right. The autoload pass is the one on the right.